Yes, it's it's swollen out. Yeah, he did. Did you want to go out and find his murderers yourself? Naturally, you know that too. Yes, I did want to go out and find these murderers myself at the time. Do you believe that the right teenager was convicted? Yes, I do. Jesse, Miss Kelly Sr., can you hear me? Yes, sir. You still, despite the fact that a jury has convicted your son and sentenced him to life plus 40 years, you believe him to be innocent? Yes, sir, I sure do. Isn't it a fact that Jesse Miss Kelly Jr. was a member of one of these satanic cults? No, he was not. He didn't attend meetings? No, he did not. There was testimony to that effect at the trial? That's a lie. Do you think everyone is lying about your son? Yes, I do. And you believe that he had an alibi? I know he did. Then why did he make a 32-minute confession to the cops? Because they hounded him, they cussed him, they threatened him, and they just made a statement to get him off his back. Terry, you want to say something to Mr. Muskelly Sr.? I have a lot to say to that man but I don't want to talk to him. I don't appreciate the action of your son. He come out of your home, out of your raisins. And no, my I don't. Son, but my son did not do it. He said he did. But he, he's mistaken. He, he had he a chance to tell the whole world he didn't do it. And we he didn't. Tried. He didn't. We tried. He didn't. He had a chance. Well, he tried, but he wouldn't let him. Paul Morrison is a television reporter who got so close to this case that he became almost obsessed with it. Uh, so much so that he was forced to quit his job in uh, a Memphis television uh, station. Paul, what about the satanic angle here? Were these boys ritually slaughtered? So far, we've heard nothing from the police, certainly. Uh, they did not establish motive in the killings. As you know, you don't need to establish motive for a conviction. But uh, publicly, there's been no mention uh, that the motive of these killings was uh, cult-related. What else could it have been? Uh, I think in, when you look at a case like this, some of the questions that might go through your mind would be uh, uh, child sexual abuse, uh, or, or if, if the motivator was indeed sexual as opposed to uh, cult related. I, I cannot say for sure it, it was or it wasn't. I do know this much. Um, you've already indicated uh, I'm convinced there was a, a, a cult of some form or fashion alive and well in West Memphis, Arkansas. Isn't it a fact that aside from the brutal beating that they administered to these three eight-year-olds that they also castrated one of the boys? Um, Christopher Byers' um, sexual organs were rather artfully removed. To my knowledge, they've never been found. Picture this happening in your town. Three eight-year-old boys, wonderful, innocent, Santa Claus believing, eight-year-old boys, brutally beaten to death, hacked and mutilated. Later, three teenagers arrested. One of them already convicted the trials of two others to take place. What impact would it have in your community, particularly if you learned that there was possibly a satanic cult that these teenagers belonged to. When kids kill kids, did the devil make them do it? The focus of this edition of Geraldo. Kids, did the devil make them do it? I want to go back to West Memphis, Arkansas, back to Jesse Miss Kelly Sr. Uh, surrounded, as you can see, by other supporters and family members of the, of the youngster, uh, 17 years old at the time of the crime, now 18 years old and sentenced to life plus 40 years. Uh, Mr. Miss Kelly Sr., we have one of the victim's grandfathers here. He's a man, I think, who knows you. Jackie, do you want to say something to Jesse? Yes, Mr. Miss Kelly, I didn't get a chance to say anything to you after the trial, but what I see, and I'm talking personally to you, I see a, re a repeat, a repeat of a beer drinking. All I see is it, it, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say, it's his raising. I feel sorry for him, 
than I do for you. You've never done nothing for him. And that's all he ever knew is what he was doing. And brother, that's your fault as much as it's his. Mr. Miskelly, do you want to respond? No, I ain't run me down all they want to. But I don't care what they say. Just leave me the hell alone. But Mr. Miss Kelly, isn't it possible now that your son is convicted, can't you look at this thing a little more objectively? Convicted after a confession? That's isn't it possible that he went astray someplace? No. Something went wrong with your son? No. He was coerced in making that station. He was kind of scared. He had the mind of a seven or eight year old and he was scared and he told them anything they could they could think of to get him off his back and the woman uh i believe uh paul her name was hutchison victoria hutchison who, who testified jesse that your son was at one of these cult meetings at least one she lied why would she lie that i don't know paul how convincing was her testimony it was rather brief, but it, uh, she indicated that she had attended uh, what appeared uh, from the testimony to have been a, uh, a, a meeting, a satanic ritual called an SBAT, uh, which in those terms is more or less a monthly or regular business meeting. Jesse, is your son going to testify against the other two boys, against, uh, what's his name, Damien and uh, Jason? Uh, that I don't know. Let me introduce our experts because I want to broaden this beyond West Memphis to talk more about this whole very controversial issue of satanic cults and devil worship. Whenever this is mentioned in polite society, people like to bury their head under the pillow and, and refuse to believe that it exists. And very often reporters like Paul Morrison uh, get an awful lot of heat for staying with these stories. I know when we did our devil worship special how very controversial that was, but we still stand by that one as well as what you're hearing today. Okay, Dr. Herbert Nyberg, a man who specializes in adolescent Satanism, among many other things. He has been counseling victims and ex-cult members for years. Jack Roper is one of the nation's leading authors and experts on satanic cults. Uh, our old friend Jack Levin, a uh, renowned, certainly well-known professor of criminology at Boston's Northeastern University, a man who says Satanism is used as a cop-out and an excuse by troubled, violent teenagers. And finally, a man uh, who knows it from the, uh, from the streets, Marcos Quinones. He's an officer with the good old NYPD, New York City Police Department. He says that more satanic murders occur than we know about. These four experts joined by our, our bereaved relatives on both sides, they are said, and we'll continue this discussion of when kids kill kids, did the devil make them do it right after this brief intermission. Kids kill kids. Did the devil make them do it? A specific focus, this horrible triple homicide just west of Memphis on the Arkansas side of the river. Yes. With the occult, I know that there's a history of hallucinogenic use. And was there any such, uh, I guess, tie with that in this murder? Uh, during teenagers? Jesse's trial, uh, he indicated, or the, the testimony indicated that he had uh, uh, had some experience with drugs. I do not know the extent of it. It didn't, uh, and the other two we, we do not know yet because basically the case file is sealed. Uh, Jesse, uh, Jesse Sr., was your son uh, a drug user? No, not especially. He uh, smoked a little marijuana every once in a while. Uh-huh. Was he a big boozer? No, not a big boozer. He, dr he did drink whiskey, though. Uh -huh. Do you have any more children? Yeah. Pam? Oh. How old is she? She just turned five. Oh. Does she have any understanding of what happened to her brother? No, she doesn't understand it. She misses her brother, but she doesn't understand. She knows he's gone, and she says she knows he's in heaven. But to really understand it, no, she don't. Hi. I would like to know what type of person it is that gets involved with cults. 
I, I don't know. Dr. Nyberg, 